What we're going to talk about today is this uh, S86-10U Honeywell uh, uh, intermittent pilot assembly. And how you'd put it in, how you put the, uh, especially how you put the uh, pilot assembly in, and kind of how it works. Uh, there's another one. Well, there's several of them, but uh, this Robert Shaw is about the same thing. That's the SB845 Robert Shaw. Uh, does the same thing as this one does. Uh, I'm going to show it set up with this one, but either one of them work fine. Control. These things are all color coded, or uh, they're color coded, but they're also marked for the for what they are on either end of the uh, umbilical. If you look there, you can see uh, where they hook up to gas valve. A uh, couple of things that are important here. We've got a sense and a spark. Okay, the spark, on this one we just run the spark coil, or the spark wire to the spark. That's also the sensing rod. That senses whether there is pilot or not. Uh, you can use a separate sensing rod with these. You take this wire and cut it off. And uh, if you have a flame rod uh, in the pilot, because some of these pilots have them, uh, you can use that for the sensing. That's actually a better way to do it if you can. Uh, but this usually works okay. Uh, you know, all the instructions are in this, so it's not exactly impossible. I did kind of want to show you how to do the pilot. Uh, and the way that's set up, obviously the way I'm doing it is much easier than how you'll ever get to do it. Uh, this is a conversion burner. Those of you that have looked at a lot of my videos have seen this silly thing before. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change out the pilot assembly. I'm not actually going to change the pilot assembly. I'm going to adapt it so that it will work with the spark igniter. Uh, if someone is having trouble on an old pilot furnace, whether it's a conversion burner or, or what it is, and they keep having pilot outages, one of the things we used to do was put a spark ignition in there. So that the pilot only lit when uh, you had a call for heat. Uh, and so I'm going to go through that process here, and we'll see if we can get this thing to work with a spark igniter. Okay, you can see I've replaced the gas valve with the gas valve that comes with the kit for the spark igniter because you can't use the old gas valve. Uh, but the pilot assembly and everything is still here. Uh, I've left most of, of those parts still on. Okay, here's the pilot assembly. I've loosened the pilot and I'm going to pull it out. And I'm going to replace the thermocouple with this, uh, the parts that come with the kit. Now you can see I put this little adapter in here that has these little spring clips. And I've just screwed it in just like I would a thermocouple. And I'm going to put the spark thing on top of it here in a sec. Now you can see I've mounted the spark uh, assembly on there. And the Allen heads down. Okay, I'm going to put the high tension wire on. And you try to mount or run the high tension wire where it isn't quite so exposed. Uh, let's get back here. Okay, I've tried to get this so it's not quite so exposed to the heat. It does take high temperature, but it does not like it well. Okay, here you can see it's sparking. Hey, dear. Okay, I've got the gas off right now, so we're gonna. Okay. Now you can see it's fired off. We'll shut it down. Try it again. 
Okay, now we're going to try this in slow motion. And you'll be able to see the pilot light like that. It just sparked and lit. Now it has to prove, and off she goes. One more time, I'm going to shut it down. I want you to listen for the uh, sequence here. Okay. Okay, occasionally you'll get one of these where when the gas comes up, and not necessarily a, uh, a burner like this, a conversion burner, but could be your ribbon burners or anything. And it'll actually pull the flame off of the flame rod here. When it does that, sometimes it'll safety it out and before it lights the burners. And then it'll shut it down and go on again and do that several times. You're just going to have to start moving this pilot assembly around a little bit until you get it to where it doesn't do that. Occasionally you have to put a shield or something like that on there. But uh, these are a good deal on older appliances where you have something that is commonly you're losing the pilot. The pilot drops out uh, and you're having to come relight the pilot occasionally. Sometimes uh, what we used to do in these things is there's a lot of pilot furnaces out there. If someone had a pilot outage, and we found out the gas valve was the problem, that the gas valve would not allow the thermocouple to work. Uh, instead of just putting a new gas valve in it, we'd put one of these uh, S86 kits in it. And uh, they worked uh, actually really good. You had to replace the gas valve anyway, and it cost another probably half again as much to put the... Uh, the uh, pilot assembly in here and you do gain the advantage that the pilot is not on all the time. Uh, a large pilot will use maybe around three dollars a month of course that depends on your gas price but uh, I think I figured it's 79 cents a uh, therm and it would uh, it would use about three dollars a month. Sometimes on these old conversion burners uh, you'll have a gas valve fail you got to replace the gas valve uh, and you can't get the original ones because a lot of the older ones use a slow opening and slow closing valve. You can get those valves but they don't always work like the old ones did and what would happen if it shuts off too fast, it makes a poof right around here and it puts a pilot out. It can be very frustrating to work with. So if you put one of these kits in it, pretty much eliminates that problem. That's the S86 10U uh, intermittent pilot.